Arizona State Sun Devil Hockey head coach Greg Powers joins me. Thank you so much for the time, coach. My pleasure, Ethan. It's good to do uh, to see your pretty face. <laughs> of course, uh, it looks like you and the family are making the most of the downtime uh, in the video that the team shared on social media. Uh, it's your MMA fighter alter ego coming out with that haircut. I think I got a long way to go to, to, to get my body to the level of my haircut, but I'm, I'm working on it every day and uh, a lot of working out and we'll see if I can get up there. But uh, no, I just have fun with my kids in my home and, um, and uh, it was, we just did it. You know, I needed a haircut and, uh, and uh, who knows, man, I might stick with it. What do you think? Should I stick with it? Hey, I like it. Uh, some new lettuce, you know, uh, you'll feel rejuvenated once this is all over. Yeah. I, respect it. I think I think it's fresh. Maybe you could join a rock band after this. Yeah, it time. regulates temperature really well, too. Like, it, you know, it's just <laughs> I need to cool off. It's a little easier, and uh, it's good. I, I got to moisturize the top of my head now, but but I don't, I don't mind. Well, Coach, uh, I know uh, you've had to cope with uh, what was a phenomenal season cut short due to uh, this pandemic and everything that's came along with it. What was the message that you gave your team once the decision was made to halt sports? Well, for us, it was, that's kind of the, the, you know, I mean, nobody gets the exact kind of closure in a situation like this that you want and that you, you kind of, you know, um, would wish for and hope for with your team. It, it was, it was really with us. It was odd. I, I think I, I kind of felt the, the inevitability of, of what was going to happen uh, happen. We had a practice on, on a Thursday. Um, and, and, uh, and we didn't know exactly, exa you know, what was going to happen, but we addressed the guys and told them what we, we felt like very well could happen. We were hoping still for at that point, maybe a, a tournament in, in front of a closed audience, but we didn't know. Um, and, uh, and then the next day it all came out where we, we really couldn't even get back together. So, the last group meeting kind of we had was, was good. I thanked them obviously and uh, thanked the seniors one last time. And then the practice we had that day was just, let's go out and have fun. You guys go out and, and just play and have fun together. And if this is the last time you're on the ice collectively as a group, we wanted to make sure that they had the most fun they could possibly have. And that's kind of what, what our MO is as a program. We want to have fun every day. You yourself, you've been very active on social media, being in a leadership role for people to take this virus seriously and what hits so close to home for you about this situation and expressing your voice? Well, I just, I just, you know, I mean, I'm trying not to get too active, but it, uh, it's just, you know, we live in such a great country and, and, and right now, you know, we're, we're not afforded all the freedoms that we're accustomed to for our entire lives. And I think that the fastest way we can get back to living, the way everybody wants is just to do what's being asked of us. And, um, and, and so I think it's that simple, you know, and that's what's, you know, through hockey and sport taught me about, about living life is, is just to buy in what's being asked of you. And, um, and, and essentially if, if everybody's going to do that, I think we'll get back to our everyday life, hopefully sooner than later. And your teams uh, are always very tight knit, and uh, obviously this year's team was no different. Um, have have you guys been doing anything to keep that close connection in these current times? You know, I mean, it's tough. You know, I mean, obviously we wanted to facilitate getting all the guys back to their homes, um, wherever they're from, if if they chose to do that. So I think that was first and foremost, just communicating with families and figuring out what was going to be best for each, each individual. We do have a handful of guys that are still in Arizona um, and just making sure they have everything that they need. So for me, it's, it's really just been a almost, you know, every other day reaching out individually to, to as many guys on the team as I can to make sure that they're okay and make sure they have everything they need. And, and most importantly, following what's being asked of us from a social distancing standpoint um, so we can get back to, to playing the game that we love. Your season gets uprooted, uh, totally unexpected, this whole thing affecting everyone and millions of people across the globe. How do you suddenly move forward and change your mindset looking ahead to next season now after that postseason opportunity was stripped away? 
you know, we, we don't have a choice, but other than to just focus on what's ahead, you know, you, we, we can't control this situation. Unfortunately, we can control how we react to this situation and, um, and, and get through this situation as a society, but as a hockey coach and, and, um, and as far as our program goes, all we can control is what's in front of us now and, and not what's behind us. So our staff has already flipped the switch. We're, we're, we're uber focused on next year's planning. That's really, we're going to take this time, obviously, to, to take a step back and spend some time with our families and, and get all that good stuff in. But um, it's, it's life as usual for us. And we're just doing it from home and, and talking to each other every day and making sure our incoming guys are ready and uh, know what's going to be expected of them. Um, doing exit and eval meetings next week with our existing team over Zoom, like I'm doing with you right now. So that's going to be a new experience. But it's business as usual in every in every way, and and, and we're focused on um, the upcoming season and and doing everything we can to plan for it and and continue to to take strides as a program. We expect to take another step forward, um, even from what we just did this year. Well, speaking of taking that step forward, uh, you guys uh, signed one of the best recruiting classes, uh, the best recruiting class that the program's had, uh, top five currently. Um, what stands out about uh, these new weapons coming in and the guys coming in um, a part of, to be a part of your program? Well, you know, we, we certainly love the last few recruiting classes that we brought in. And, and that's your goal, as a, as a, especially as a new program, is to – continue to evolve and continue to bring in, you know, at least on paper, because that's all you can control until they get here and perform more talented classes year over year. And we've definitely done that. It's a huge tribute to Mike and Alex um, and the way that they go out and evaluate talent. And, and uh, it's a huge tribute really to our current players and our players that have cycled through the program to date to build a, 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 an establishment and a culture in this, in this program that, that high level kids want to come be a part of. And that's what we have in this year's class, just a ton of talent. Um, you know, the forward group, the, the four kids coming in um, are, are all, you know, they're all 40 to 50 point guys in the USHL, which generally in that league, um, it translates to success at the college level. If you can score in that league, you're going to score in college. And so, um, really a lot of talent up front. And then obviously we really like Carson Casabud on the back end. He's, he's a, a, a big shutdown, you know, two kind of two way guy skates incredibly well, physical fits into how we want to play. And then obviously what we're adding um, in net with Cole Brady being a fifth round draft pick, he's, he's a big imposing guy in net. Um, and he's really going to help with depth at that position. And, and most importantly, push the guys that we have, um, and compete for playing time right away. So um, that's, that's how you, you get good. Our practices next year at every position, we anticipate being incredibly competitive, and that's what you want as a coach. If you can create that uber competitive environment every day in practice, it will translate over into the games because it's going to be hard to get in our lineup next year at every position. Yes, you guys will have a ton of talent, and uh, I know those guys are ready to work. will be ready to work for you, of course, and – ASU is becoming an intriguing transfer destination and starting to seem, uh, you know, with Sean Doogie announcing he's coming to the desert. Uh, obviously, tr uh, transfer Chris Granda will be eligible next season. And uh, you can't go without mentioning the huge instant impact that uh, James Sanchez and Willie Nyram had for you this past season. Just what's impressed you most about the quick spread of appeal towards your program and embracing transfers into the beach? the tradition mantra. Yeah. You know, I, I think that's, it's, it's a credit really to the kids. I mean, Willie and, and James just bought into our culture from day one, you know, and really that's why they chose to come here because they wanted to be a part of building something in a culture and into an environment where we, we, as a new program with no arena, no conference and, and a startup type like mindset um, have to go into every day with a chip on our shoulder. And, and that's what you get with kids that, you know, for whatever reason, may it not have worked out at their, their previous institution, we want them to come in with a chip on their shoulder and, and kind of join forces with us. And in our mindset, where we, we go into every game with, with, a, with a major chip, and, and James and Willie both did that. And, uh, and I, can, I can speak very freely in, in that, that Sean Doogie and Chris Grando will definitely have chips on their shoulders next year. 
And that's why they're both such a good fit. Chris was arguably, you know, our most consistent, hardworking guy in practice uh, every day this past year. And I think that speaks volumes for him. Uh, for a kid that, that doesn't have that light at the end of the tunnel to play in games over the weekend, to come to practice and come to the rink with that mindset of, of that's my game. Today's my game every day, which he did. Um, he's going to fit into what we do so well with how he plays. And then Sean speaks for himself. He's, he's incredibly talented and just needed a, a fresh reset. He obviously had a great sophomore year at Wisconsin and led him in scoring. Um, he's going to come in and, and be a huge plus for us. So, you know, when you, when you tack on those four freshmen and then these two uh, guys, um, we are deep up front, very, very deep. Well, when you talk about leadership for next year, uh, obviously very heartbroken for the seniors that didn't get the opportunity. I mean, I know they talked about all season long getting that shot at a national title and stripped away. But now, um, you know, we talked about how you're switching the mindset for next season. Who do you see stepping up into these leadership roles that, you know, Brinson and Tyler and those guys are leaving behind? Oh, we have a great leadership group coming back. Obviously, you know, losing, you know, Brinson and, and Bushy are two C's. And then and you lose um, four-year guys like Brett Gruber and Steen Pashnuk and even a Max Prodzik, you know, who was only here for a year, but he was such a great teammate. And, and really, you know, you know, for people on the outside looking in, they don't understand the positive impact that Max had on our program every day in practice and in our locker room and what a great influence he was on Evan and Justin Robbins. So, you know, the five of them as a core, you know, you, you can always paint a special picture for your seniors, but, but, but they're going to be hard to replace from that standpoint. But I think guys like Jacob Wilson and Johnny Walker and Josh Maniscalco and Dom Garcia, you know, and, and then even guys like Willie Neerham and, and James Sanchez, who are going to be seniors, Jordan Sand, who's now upperclassman, PJ Ron, upperclassman, um, Philip Bunces is a senior. We have old, an older group um, that have all seen those guys lead the right way. And we're, we're polishing up what our leadership group and guys that are going to wear letters looks like um, over the course of the next week or so. I'm probably planning to have that announced in the next couple of weeks. Uh, but we're excited about it and, uh, and, and fully believe in what we will have as a leadership group to kind of push the rock forward that guys like Brinson and Tyler already did. And Coach, are you surprised at all just how fast this has all happened for you, just the, the rise of Arizona State as a hockey school? I, honestly, it sounds pompous, but I, I'm personally not. Um, uh, you know, I mean, I'm not at all. You know, we, 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 we anticipated that this past season we could have the kind of success that we had. It maybe came a little bit early in, in, in two seasons ago when we made the tournament for the first time. I don't think many of us expected um, quite to have that success that quickly, but it, it, that would, what, what we're doing was always a part of our vision and in the cards for us and we thought could be done. Um, and, uh, and, you know, not a lot of people did, but, but at the end of the day, it doesn't matter what anyone else thinks. So um, it matters only how uh, our staff and our players collectively as a family go about every day and, and, and treat every day. And, and we're going to continue to do that and strive for even bigger and better. I didn't know if you've seen these before, if you've seen these yet. Is that, uh, is that <laughs> like the quarantine toilet paper you have there or what? <laughs> <laughs> um, I actually I found one of these at Oceanside and I wanted to show you I didn't know if you had seen I it. saw them yeah I don't know what like the I think we're gonna get new ones with a mohawk done but uh yeah, 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 yeah. It's, I think I think we had we had a supporter of ours um make those t-shirts and then somehow they they morphed into towels at a game but uh yeah yeah I don't know I don't know how I feel about those well, Coach, uh, we appreciate the time. Hopefully hockey won't be away too much longer. I might go crazy personally. But uh, well wishes to you and your family. Hey, thanks, Ethan. You hang in there and be safe and uh, appreciate the time. Yeah, of course, Coach. Will do. Thank you.